Welcome everybody to episode number 12 of Running Rants and the very first one in October, launching our spectacular October. This is a very special episode though, because right behind us is the most haunted cemetery in the entire United States, Union Cemetery, Eastern Connecticut. We're gonna run around, get a little feel for it, and then go for a little jog inside of it and see how spooky it really is. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome everybody, and as you know, we are at the most haunted cemetery in the entire United States. Now, the cemetery is actually behind all of this bush. I want to kind of go for a little walk and tell you a little bit of the history of Union Cemetery. Now, right now we are in Easton, Connecticut, which is roughly 90 minutes north of New York City. The town of Easton has roughly 7,500 people living here, which is not that much. Now, Union Cemetery has been visited by some of the most popular and profound paranormal investigators, and they have said that it is the most haunted. You have had Ed and Lorraine Warren, who were portrayed in the Conjuring movies. They have been here and they have taken pictures and video and a lot of evidence uh, if this is something that you believe in or not and if you believe in them, but it has been backed up by multiple people as being very haunted. Now the story of the place goes is that there is a figure, a white woman, woman in the white dress, as you will see if you look up anything about the Union Cemetery online, who will be here haunting anyone that comes. Now, who this woman is is kind of up for debate. You can look online. Some people say it was a woman that was murdered um, after she murdered her husband, other things along those lines, but that is not concrete. As the story goes is that the woman in white tends to get into the road, which is the main one right over here. There's another one perpendicular on the other side. We'll get hit by the car. Has the driver come out, is super flustered and realizes that there was nothing that they hit. Pretty creepy if you ask me. I have not experienced that myself. Now if you look to our left, we have this beautiful church, Black Rock Church. That's right here at nighttime. This is very creepy. To our right is the actual cemetery itself. I wanna tell you a little bit more about my experiences here and we're gonna go through, being as respectable as possible. So a little history about me and ghost hunting. Now, I'm not the most firm believer of ghosts, but I'm a big skeptic and I really enjoy kind of figuring out if it's real or not. I go into it, either thing could be possible. It's kind of fun. Back in the day, I'd say around when I was maybe 15, 16, me and my friends would go ghost hunting. Now, living in New England, there's a lot of activity going on over here. So we'd kind of go to all those places and see what was up. We'd bring our recorders, we would do the whole nine from the ghost hunters, you know. We would do everything. Today I want to tell you of my two stories that I have going to Union Cemetery. These stories are probably five years old. And the first one was me, my friend Max, who you can see in episode number nine. A very fun episode. Friend for a long time. Him and I would go ghost hunting and it would always be me and him and we'd tag other people along. So the first time we went to Union, I went with my friend Jake and my friend Max, and we went there. We did go at night, very spooky. We parked near the church and we made our way up, making sure to be quiet. Now, you're not supposed to be there past nighttime, nightfall, and it's very easy to get caught seeing, like I said, there's two main streets, so we have to be very quiet and low key. So we go in there, we're doing our recordings, and it's, you know, your adrenaline's really rushing. It might even be like a horror movie where you know nothing's gonna physically hurt you, but your blood starts rushing. Your mind starts wandering. What's gonna happen? Anything's a possibility. To me, it's like swimming in the ocean. What can happen? Anything could happen. So we're going in there and we're looking around. We split up, trying to do our own thing, giving ourselves a little bit of personal space. And while we're there, we decide that it'd be pretty fun if we try to split up and sit in the far corners to see who can stay there the longest without being spooked. So we do that for about five or 10 minutes. And honestly, the feeling started to fade a little bit. You're on a main road and it's just a little bit spooky when you hear about it, but when you get there, it kind of fades a little bit. Not much happened that night. So we packed our bags and we headed home. We then came back a year later. This time we came with Max and Jake, but also with Jake's girlfriend and I think one other person. This time when we get there, 
down the street on that main road, we see a police officer with his lights going round and round. Now he pulled somebody over, we can see him. He's there, which is bad, but it's good because we can see him. So we decide to go in there, we're doing our investigating. And then we decide we've been there a little bit too long and we pack our bags and we head out. We're leaving the cemetery. And as we leave, we see a car coming right towards us. Except the cops no longer down the road. And this car seems to be going a little bit slow as if they might have seen some. So flustered as we are, we're looking around. We're trying to make a decision with five people instantaneously. You know how hard this is? It's not easy. So we decided we just laid flat on the floor. We just went prone and we just hoped to God no one saw us. So as we do that, our heads are buried in our arms. We're right outside of the cemetery. Honestly, we are not inside of the gate. So in retrospect, I don't think we had much to worry about. But we lay down, this car stops right next to us. None of us look. We can see through the little parts of our fingers that the light is stopped. And we stay where we are. We don't move a muscle. Soon enough, that car heads away. We get up and we run over to our car, which was actually parked right over here. We get into the car, our hearts are racing. We're everyone's trying to tell their side of the story. We were all there at the same time, but everyone's like, oh my gosh, can, did you see this? I felt like so, it was insane. We're like, you know what, let's get out of here. We're not trying to get in trouble. We're just trying to have some fun. We're like, okay, keen ignition, start it up. Wait, stop. Jake's girlfriend lost her phone. She's patting her pockets and she realizes that it's no longer in her pants and it has to be over here. Now, Jake, <laughs> I think he just wimps out. He's like, I am not going back in there. Like I said, it wasn't as scary as we thought, but sometimes you're, when your heart's racing, you can kind of confuse maybe adrenaline for being scared. Jake stays in the car, Max stays in the car. I'm like, you know what, let's do it. So her and I, from back over there, make our way this way. Keep in mind, our hearts were racing. We weren't really sure exactly where we stopped because we just fell to the floor, got up, and booked it. So we're looking, but we don't want to take our phones out and make it any more obvious that we're here. A bright light in a dark cemetery stands out like a sore thumb. So we're looking around, we're, we're shimming through everything, trying not to make ourselves noticed. And we finally find it after maybe five minutes of looking. We get back to the car and we race on over. Now, not as spooky as I would have liked. The Union Cemetery really gave us a run for our money. Since that day, I've never been back and here we are. Now, I don't think we're gonna get much activity. We are here during the day. We're not supposed to be here at night. Let's go on in there and take a little look around. So here we are. As you can tell, as, as old as this place is, I'd have to say it's very well kept and it's a very clean cemetery. So on my way here, I stopped at a tag sale right down the street. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to ask the locals a little bit about Union Cemetery. I looked around and I asked them, I said, hey, I'm gonna stop over at Union Cemetery. Have you heard anything about it, any, any stories? And honestly, there was an older gentleman and what looked like his daughter. And the older gentleman said he, ha he and her have lived there their entire lives. And truthfully, he told me not to go. When I told him I've been there before, he truthfully looked like he was either really scared or thought I was possessed or something. It was a little bit off-putting considering he had no reason to try and be scary about it or anything. He said he's lived there his entire life. He knew a couple of creepy stories. He said that he had a, a couple people tell him that Right around these corners were some quicksand. He also told me a story of one of his friends who was driving around here late at night and saw someone with a horse carriage and then what seemed to be have turned the corner and when his friend went to go look, it was no longer there. So not sure of all the stories that have happened here, but seeing that there's another tag sale over there, I say, why not? Let's go over, ask him if they have any stories of Union Cemetery. Hello. How are you today? So I spoke with her and she was awfully nice, but did not want to be on camera. So I'll kind of tell you a little bit about her story. She is not a believer, which is very interesting. And she's the only one to live in that house. It used to be a farm that got converted to a house. 
What she told me uh, was really interesting. They built the house in the 90s, which was the craze of the Blair Witch Project. She was there when the Blair Witch Project kind of happened and told me that people would just come up and knock on her door asking about just anything. Now, she had a tag sale, which is the only reason I went over and spoke to her. But I thought that was very interesting, something like pop culturally that reinstated, kind of brought back the interest for a cemetery like this. Another thing she told me is that there used to be ghost tours that would go around, I guess, Connecticut and stop here, which I think is very odd because though it's a very nice cemetery, to be able to profit off of a ghost tour, I think it's a little much. Though around Halloween, I could understand it. She really enjoys the cemetery, it seems like. She didn't know about the history of it before moving here, which is very interesting. And she was shy, she didn't want to be on camera, but it was super nice. If anyone wants to know anything about it, she pretty much told me everything there is, so there's not any reason to go knocking on her door. She was awfully polite, and I'm glad to have talked to her, but she said she has seen nothing. So believe her or not, that's up to you, but the lady who lives across the street from the most haunted cemetery in the world said that she has seen nothing. Haunted or not, it's a beautiful cemetery, and I'm glad to have spent it talking about everything I know about it, and obviously from the lovely neighbor of the most haunted cemetery in the world. How crazy is that? Well, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You can check this link out, that link out. This is October, we're gonna get spooky the whole time, and it was a once in a lifetime experience to get to talk to the neighbor of the most haunted cemetery in the world. Truly was amazing. Stay tuned.